Now to discuss that more, we're joined by Mustafa Khoshchejm, journalist and political commentator who is joining us uh, now in the studio. Thank you very much, Mr. Khoshchejm, uh, for your presence here and, of course, the comments that you will be giving us. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Khoshchejm, uh, as we heard in Rambar's report, and, of course, a quick reminder and flashback to 2017 when the Polish embassy in Tehran uh, held several events to commemorate the arrival of uh, the Polish refugees in Iran as a token of appreciation to the Iranian government. There were several uh, cultural events that were organized. They even went to the city of Isfahan where the Polish orphans were uh, kept and of course they had schools there and everything. Uh, well, uh, long story short, even the Poles themselves uh, seem to be very grateful two years ago. What happened now and why did the United States pick Poland for this meeting? Hello and thanks for having me. Well, you know the fact that uh, Poland has been picked up to host the conference is very much telling. Um, in absence of major uh, powerful states to partner with the United States in its anti-Iran policies, uh, they've uh, been able to pick up no other state than Poland. Uh, you know, w what is the size of, uh, you know, Poland's uh, saying in, you know, world equations? Uh, how, how strong is Poland's influence on the global stage or regional states or in the Middle East or at least in East Europe? Uh, the answer to these questions that are known by everyone could tell us uh, the very fact that why not, for example, the UK and why uh, the US has failed uh, uh, to pick up Germany or England or uh, France to host the conference. And that's a very important issue because it's, it shows how isolated the United States is in its anti-Iran policies. In the meantime, Poland has been picked up because uh, in absence of, you know, uh, major allies and partners to help the United States and to support the United States anti-Iran policies, uh, they are working on some, uh, you know, kind of policy in order to buy or intimidate some small East European states to give them a vote at the UN, uh, like what they've been doing in uh, Albania, where uh, the, their, that they are enforcing their policies on the Tirana government through mafia-style uh, groups and uh, through controlling the, 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 the establishment in there. That's why the Mujahideen al organization terrorist group has been empowered so much in Tirana that they are now seen as part of the establishment in there. And that's why when they fire an Iranian diplomat, uh, uh, this is not the Tirana government that presents explanations or declares the news or breaks the news. Uh, it's uh, John Bolton who breaks the news uh, through his Twitter account. Uh, with regard to Poland or Bulgaria, the same thing is done, but this time through small uh, donations and financial assistance. They are going to build them some share the military base in Poland in order to allegedly protect them against, uh, you know, a rising escalations with Russia that is, you know, uh, that, that has started because of the NATO and because of Europe and the United States who have been trying to antagonize uh, uh, Russia in East Europe. So as you see, they are building some small states uh, who could partner them, who could be bought or intimidated in order to help them uh, rescue themselves from this kind of isolation that they are feeling on the political stage to some extent. Uh, so, Mr. Khorshish, um, thank you very much for elaborating on, on that, but um, what is the significance of uh, this particular conference? Uh, this is a very important issue and good question that you raised. You know, uh, uh, the United States, uh, especially uh, the present administration and especially uh, President Trump, they are masters of theatrical moves. They say something, but they move in the opposite direction. Uh, you could see so many uh, paradoxical stances in the Trump administration. They claim to be moving against Obama, but what they do is exactly what Obama did. Obama also called for a pullout of Syria. Obama also uh, uh, understood that they have failed to push Iran's regional influence back. So uh, Trump is doing the same, actually, despite the fact that Mr. Pompeo uh, uh, claims that they have 20 prerequisites uh, for Iran to strike a deal or to agree to talks to Iran. 
you could see uh, that uh, uh, several of those uh, you know, conditions and prerequisites pertain to Iran's regional presence. But now, uh, uh, in opposition to all those stated uh, policies against Iran, the United States and Mr. Trump himself, they have called, out, uh, they have called for a pullout of Syria. Uh, that means that they have been defeated by Iran, and many political circles in Washington agree uh, to that. Uh, in time, uh, they need to justify these paradoxical views and actions that they take. You know, when it comes to strategy, Donald Trump's uh, administration uh, uh, lacks a very integrated strategy towards Iran or the Middle East. Uh, that's why when you look at their actions, you see the similar things that uh, were done before him and at the time of Obama. So they need to justify their Arab allies, especially the, uh, why these paradoxical views are seen, why uh, are so many uh, contradictory positions are there in the U.S. administration's foreign policy. So they have no other way but to you know, make their best moves at the State Department, especially because Trump himself may not care for that. Uh, Mr. Pompeo is doing his best in order to, you know, uh, uh, whitewash these paradoxical views, but I'm sure that many of these contradictory remarks and actions in the U.S. foreign policy will be top on the agenda uh, of participants in this, uh, you know, uh, future conference. Uh, what Thank we you. see now is that uh, the U.S. has been encouraged after so many failures in confrontation with Iran uh, uh, all throughout the last 19 years that when it's not able to uh, you know, convince Tehran and Moscow or force Tehran and Moscow to give a cake, a piece of cake in Syria to Washington, uh, there is no prospect for any kind of achievement in sight. Therefore, they need to do some damage control. They need to control their financial spendings and costs and military spendings in order to free their you know, resources and assets and redirect them towards China. In other words, I do not want to say that the United States is leaving the Middle East. But this could be the start, I mean the pullout of Syria. And they need to keep their allies in their place because the, their plan entails transferring the United States minimum role in Syria to uh, their Arab allies and Israel in order to go on with some kind of friction against Iran and, and of course Turkey in order to delay Tehran and Moscow's ultimate victory in Syria and the region in order not to allow these two celebrate their final victory and enjoy the merits of their victories against the terrorists in that region. So uh, there are good indications to understand this. Uh, the a, a next move uh, uh, that is going to accompany this transfer of role to the third party Arab states in the region to stand against Iran and somehow Turkey and Russia uh, is that uh, they intend to gather up some remaining militant groups, some 10 percent of uh, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of militant groups, uh, militants were in the region, in Syria and Iraq, and now only a, a small percentage of them has been left in the region after several, several years of war. Uh, and now they are being redirected to some areas in north, northwestern and southwestern Iraq in order to keep the country in turmoil where of the Hajj al-Shabi and popular movements and tribes in there in order to weaken Iran's allies in the region and trouble President Assad and the government in Baghdad and force them to continue their you know, engagement with this uh, uh, war on militancy in these two countries so that uh, they would stop Iran and Russia from celebrating their victory and they would find some time, asset and energy to uh, go to the Far East to think of uh, China. Thank you very much, Mr. Mustafa Khoshesh, of course, with his very elaborate and detailed explanation of uh, some summit that is, of course, proposed by the United States and is supposed to be held in Poland.